Guten Tag, and welcome in again to another edition of your favorite video podcast, Musings from the Mountains, presented by WVSports.com. I'm your host slash managing editor of the site, Keenan Cummings. I'm joined by my sidekick, Jared, yet again, in the big boy seat. Guys, it's here. Uh, you have been waiting for it. We have been waiting for it. Practically anybody that likes sports has been waiting for it. Game week is here. Uh, we're finally going to get away from discussion that has nothing to do with football and talk about football. Yes, everybody's excited. I know I'm excited. Jared, excited? I'm jacked. I'm stoked. I'm ready to get this weekend going. Yeah, fully torqued. We're fully torqued and ready to talk some football. West Virginia will open up against Eastern Kentucky. FCS opponent struggled mightily in their first game. Uh, shellacked is probably the best way to put it by Marshall. Blanked 59 to nothing. Had 166 total yards of offense. Uh, it's pretty telling. They punted the ball six times. They had seven first downs. Uh, that, that pretty much gives you a perspective of how the game went for, for uh, Eastern Kentucky. West Virginia, obviously, uh, this game is not necessarily as much about Eastern Kentucky from a West Virginia perspective. That's no disrespect. I do think that they'll be better from, from week one to week two. But West Virginia's got to get right. They haven't played a football game in uh, quite a few months now. Uh, last one was in December. So they got to kind of turn things around and get ready for football season. And Neil Brown believes they're ready. Jared, what are you most excited about to see this team in action? You know, we've heard a lot of things throughout fall camp, you know, a lot of things preseason. What do you want to see play out? Yeah, I'm, I'm always a big offensive guy. You know, when I play Madden, I, I simulate playing defense because I hate it. I love offense. I love seeing guys, receivers go out and take the top off the defense. And especially you look at, how deep the West Virginia wide receiver room is this year, opening up the season against Eastern Kentucky, who I believe it was 345 yards passing that they allowed uh, to Marshall last week. Um, you know, I think a game like that, you know, we've, West Virginia has a lot of great talent at wide receiver. Um, opening up the season with a, I don't want to say cupcake opponent, but a cupcake opponent like Eastern Kentucky could definitely do wonders for, um, confidence uh, among that group and among the whole team, as well as, uh, you know, getting a wide variety of guys involved in the mix at all over the field, all over the depth chart, which is something that Coach Brown said that he was trying to do. Yeah, expect a lot of players to play uh, Saturday. West Virginia is going to roll in as many guys as they can. And without the red shirt rule in place, you know, you can play as many freshmen as you want, as much as you want, with, without risking losing a year of eligibility. For me, Two things. Everyone knows one, the offensive line. Uh, of course, the fat guy's going to talk about an offensive line, but I really have to see West Virginia show some improvement there. I thought it was really, it really stood out to me yesterday in Neil's te teleconference when you know, he was asked about the offensive line play, about the run game. And he said, you know, it better be, it better be better. It pretty much. It, and Three that words. was his only answer. Three he words. Did, that was he, it. Yeah, he did not further elaborate, and it should. You know, West Virginia, that's been the focus. They've tried to simplify things, make things better. Now it's time to see it in action. Uh, if you cannot run the football against Eastern Kentucky, you're probably going to have some issues against a, a Big 12 schedule that while they have lost some pieces up front across the league, it's not as senior laden, still not going to be easy sledding. Along with that, I want to see the offensive line, just how it works, you know, how guys fit in. I think that this is a game where you experiment a little bit, you know, use some guys in rotations. Bryson Mays is that swing guy that can move around and play. Where does he fit in at? You know, how much does he play? How much does the second unit play? Neil has said that he feels comfortable with eight guys right now. Uh, could go up to ten. I think you'll probably see all ten play in this game. And we'll actually get a read. You know, has this unit improved? Or will this continue to be the, uh, the old Achilles heel for, for West Virginia moving into 2020? A lot of other things to talk about here. Uh, well, you're not really looking at a perspective of – I don't think final score really matters as much here. You know, some people are going to compare, you know, 59 to nothing for Marshall. What, what will West Virginia do? I think West Virginia is going to try to establish the run in this game, uh, get some momentum there, get some confidence there. I was encouraged by James Gemitter yesterday saying, you know, we're going to be the most improved offensive line in the country. And he stood by that. He even, he even retweeted you. Yeah. He retweeted you and furthered that point. I think that West Virginia is going to try to establish the run. You know, you'll see a couple deep shots. Obviously, they've got some weapons on the outside. 
But I think this game's more about West Virginia. It, it's about establishing who you are in 2020, kind of erasing the ghosts that haunted this team last year and, and making those steps. They've talked about improvement all throughout fall camp. Improvement, improvement, improvement. They want to be the most improved team in the country. Well, you come out the gates, you start hot, and you beat a team you should beat. That's a good start heading into an Oklahoma State game after a bye week that is going to be not easy at all. Uh, it, it's not unwinnable, but it's probably one of the more challenging ones that West Virginia is going to have on their slate. So a lot of things that are exciting about football. Uh, it's going to be different, though, obviously, a very different environment. Uh, there, there's no fans in the stands. Media will be separated with masks on and in the, in the press box. We won't leave. We'll do Zoom interviews. Anything about it, you know, that you think is a little weird or, or, is, or is this 2020 football? Uh, I mean, you know, it's necessary, these adjustments that we've all had, had to make. I mean, personally, I'll miss out on the, uh, the post-game pizza up in the press box. But yes. I'm, actually, I'm actually kind of looking forward to uh, not having to wake up all that early to trek on down to Milan Pushkar Stadium and sit in the press box for a couple hours. It's, it's a nice change of pace. I mean, we'll get to a point where we'd like for things to get back to normal. I mean, I know a lot of people would like for things to get back to normal now. But, you know, I think – um, I think everybody involved is making the best of the situation, especially, um, you know, I guess I'll give credit to the WVU Athletic Communications Department. You know, they've done a wonderful job with, um, you know, starting to get things as normal as possible, as we saw uh, yesterday when we spoke with uh, players, coordinators, everybody involved. Yeah, you mentioned food. Pour one out for chicken farm. Definitely a, fa a favorite meal of the media in the press box, but it's prediction time. We didn't really dive too much into the old <laughs> into the old Eastern Kentucky, but we'll we'll take we'll take a stab here. Uh, what do you got? You know, what what do you think the prediction? What's your prediction for this game? And who is your who is your one player that you think is critical? Yeah, I think so. I'll start with your your second question there. I think. Sam James, just regardless, whether it was the first game or not, is definitely critical to keep an eye on, especially because all those drops he had last year. And, you know, how does he start this season? You know, is he – are drops an issue? Is that something he was able to fix in the, pre, or in the preseason and the offseason? Um, and especially, again, going back to the depth of the wide receiver room, you know, if – quite honestly, if Sam James, if TJ Simmons, if – Winston Wright isn't getting it done. Well, they got five other guys who can step right in and probably probably get some stuff done. So, um, yeah, I have my eyes on Sam James, especially because he's just – he's quick. When he has the ball in his hands, he makes guys miss. He just he, – he's just a true threat if he can put it all together. But uh, prediction-wise, um, I think it'll be important to consider that – West Virginia has what is it after Saturday they've got two weeks off and then they play Oklahoma State so you'd have to assume that they're going to want to take this game try a bunch of different things so then they can go back and take that two weeks of practice and kind of uh, prepare the best way they can for a, a solid team in Oklahoma State but again West Virginia is going to have no problem with Eastern Kentucky um, they're just I mean they got blown out by Marshall. No disrespect to Marshall, but that was Marshall. And West Virginia is a Power 5 football program in the Big 12. Um, Eastern Kentucky, they're just, they, they should just be glad they're getting paid for this one. They are getting a payday. Uh, I got West Virginia. I think it's going to be something to the tune of 56 to 3, you know, yeah. six, 63 to 6. Something in that range. It wouldn't surprise me if Eastern Kentucky tacks on a late touchdown. Um, I do think West Virginia is going to be playing a lot of young players in this game. So the score isn't really as important as I mentioned in the opening. I think it's going to be more about getting those snaps, getting those reps. And you're seeing some of these new guys we've heard a lot about. Tony Fields, you know, some guys that maybe aren't a freshman, but have a lot of experience at other places that are now trying to fit in at West Virginia. I do think West Virginia will win this game. They're 20-0 and against the FCS for a reason. And this team is not James Madison from last year. So Far from West, Virginia, Far from West, West Virginia will win this game going away. And we'll get, to, we'll get to some answers. We're not going to get a lot of answers, but we're going to get some answers 
of what this football team could look like big picture in 2020. Thank you for tuning in again. Uh, this has been another fun field edition of Musings from the Mountains. We will be bringing you some more uh, here soon. We're going to take some questions and answers and dive into some Big 12 stuff once we get past this one, the lone non-conference game on the schedule. So a lot of things coming up. Thanks for tuning in again. This is another edition of Musings from the Mountains.